What's going on guys and for the win here we are back with our franchise mode as the Ottawa Senators and uh, we're picking up where we left off here after the draft into free agency where a big piece is available. Now we're probably going to sign and maybe even make a trade ship off Latang. but before we do that got some winners to read off from last year's point scoring contest so first up is a uh, whoa shadow who guessed team league was Josh Norris and the goaltender he got right was Carter Hart. So congrats to you. Next up, we got fucking stallion duck with the uh, team league Shabbat and the goaltender Carter Hart. Uh, next up is Danny's corner of cringe. I uh, guess defend uh, team league was a uh, Shabbat and goaltender was Hart. Next up is a uh, Likenson Gibson who guessed uh, Shabbat and Carter Hart as well. So very popular guess for that. And it's turning out to work. Next up is Michael Levin with once again Thomas Shabbat and Carter Hart. Uh, next up, Ronnie Donnie 13 with Shabbat and Hart as well. And last but not least is Clapence with once more Thomas Shabbat and Carter Hart. So congrats to all you guys. How many is that? Is that that's seven? Yeah, seven. Seven winners from last year. Good job. Still no clean sweeps. We'll get one eventually. We will get one eventually for sure. All right. So now free agency. Now I did see a pretty good, uh, oh yeah, comment um, to search for. Let's see here. Hold on. Let's see if I can somehow find him. Can I go by alphabetical? Oh, that was it. That was right the first time. Hold on. I want to see if he did drop the free agency and if he is indeed a low elite. Hold on. Winterberg, that guy we saw a couple years ago, really, really late in the draft, listed as, you know, a uh, an elite. But then, so there he is. Uh, no. <laughs> see, AHL top six medium. It lies to you. Definitely lies to you sometimes when they're that late in the draft. Oftentimes it, it changes to an AHL, even if it says low elite. So, yeah, that uh, I don't know if it's a glitch or they meant to do that, but it's a weird thing that happens. Anyway, wait a sec. Do I have oops? Do I have the freaking draft settings on or do we just have everyone scouted? Whoopsies. Now I just saw Winterberg. I might have just signed him if I didn't. Whoops, I, th I thought I turned them off last episode, man. I guess I didn't. Oh, uh, all right. Well, we'll turn those off now. <laughs> and we'll take a look. And probably, probably still sign McAvoy. Like, we were kind of planning to already, so that doesn't really matter that we see that correct overall and whatnot. So, Charlie McAvoy. He wants a seven-year deal. I don't know if we'll give him a seven-year deal. There is another team interested in him, San Jose. Because, of course, I was thinking more like three or four. I was thinking three would be solid. Let's check out what our contract situation is going to look like for the next couple years. Just to refresh my memory. You know, it's been a couple days for this series. Hope you guys all had good Easter's and stuff with your family. I sure did. All right. So, yeah, we are going to have to sign Lafreniere. We have 16 mil available right now. But we got to think in terms of next year. So it's 37 mil. Let's actually, oh my goodness, this guy. I'm going to wait and hopefully that goes down. Now for a minute, he was a franchise. I think that might go back. But still, that's a lot of money he's asking for. I'm still going to hold off on that. See if that changes at any point in the year because that's a lot. I mean, I know he's good and all, but goodness. I'll wait on that. Anyway, um, I think we'll have enough money for the next few years. We can always, yeah, we'll be able to kind of mix stuff up and around. We do have a lot of entry level type guys coming in. So that's why I was thinking like three years. And then we can reassess from there. Or we could do less years than that, give him more. And then maybe get him to an extension if we need him for a bit longer. But safe play would be to offer three years for like 9.5. I hope he comes here for that. I know it's not the correct amount of years. And I know San Jose's offering him a deal. But we are a good team now. Second round playoff guys. A lot of young guys coming up. 
McAvoy could fill a big hole. I could go 10 to be completely safe, and I will. It's a lot of money, but I think it will be worth it. Let's do that. 10 mil for three years for McAvoy. And I really think that's it for uh, free agents here. I need, again, I need to refresh my memory by looking at our... Uh, what our, what our roster is looking like. But I, I seem to remember we had a lot of kind of everything. And we didn't need a whole lot. So let's see. Wait, is this guy real 10? Mm, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, I think we have enough. Well, this guy's not signed. Could sign him, though, honestly. Might want to. He's 80 overall now. It says listed as depth, but we'll, yeah, we'll wait on that and see if that changes, and then we could sign him. I think we have enough forwards, though, honestly. Maybe just get a depth guy to be safe, though. Although we have pocket still. So we got, yeah, we're fine. Defensively... If we can get McAvoy, we can possibly trade Latang. Terrell will need an extension. But Shabbat and uh, McAvoy. Terrell, maybe Odell with him. And then like Petterstrom. Or we can hold on to Latang for a bit and go really heavy and then use someone as depth. Still Lahua's depth or something, but we also have these guys coming up, so I don't really don't think... Yeah, we might even need to trade Latang still. We'll, we'll see what happens with our goaltender, or the uh, defensive situation. We're hoping again Ginla becomes a backup, essentially. I think it's the kind of goal here. Although I don't trust Subban in the starting role, so maybe I was looking at attendee. Yeah, we might actually have a step back year here if things don't go well. We do have plenty of money, but there's no one really here. Someone was saying, maybe try to get Shishorkin. He did really well. And we could trade Subban in that case. Yeah, he did do really well for us in uh, in our New York franchise. He actually won a freaking, was it a, a called, uh, no, um, Con Smythe, right? When we won the first cup. And then we moved on to our like franchise type guys. Eh. Hasn't done that much here. But it should maybe still be around that 86. I don't know. We do have the money. I'm questioning it a bit. Uh, we do know that Subban cannot really be that starter. So we do know that. It's also the Samsonov guy. Who has done much better in his starting role. Played in the playoffs, did... F wow. Yeah, I'd say he did good. I'm kind of leaning more towards this guy if I'm going to grab someone in, tr in to trade a uh, Subban. Probably won't need four years. I think I'd say probably two years would get the job done. And we'll offer him 7-5. At this point, we'll likely have to trade Latang, although we do have the money currently. Oh, wait, we actually wouldn't for that. But... I mean, it'll it'll give us the benefit of the doubt, I think, with the uh, cap space. Because it's only, it's not even a mil over what we're asking. And, like, they assume we'll bury contracts, I think. So, uh, we should be good, even to get him signed and then decide if we want to trade Latang. I don't know. It might not work like that. But we'll see. Sometimes it does. You can really go over it in uh, free agency there. So, let's sim up here and see if that does work. Again, and I just want to make sure I can get him before I trade Sue, man, basically. Yeah, so we were able to get both of them. Uh, we will for sure trade Sue, man, now. And I'm not too sure what I want back. Someone said, like, a really good shutdown de uh, defenseman. I'll, the, the thing is, like, I think we're kind of okay in that. I know we don't have an amazing, amazing shutdown. But we do have some of that. We got guys coming up who could sort of fill that role. Like maybe Kapusta. Maybe Twomanen as well. 
two guys. They're both two way, but I think they could work as shut down. We're basically waiting and seeing about this defensive core, essentially. So if I don't have to trade anyone yet, I won't. And I think that's where we're at right now. We might not be able to move Latang's contract, which will kind of suck, but at the same time, we'll be okay. We can, we'll be, we'll be just fine, especially if we trade Subban. Um, and maybe I want to hold off until I see a jump on Iginla to make sure he becomes ready for backup role. I might do that as well. Yeah, that seems like a bit of a smart move here. Start, I'll, have, I'll probably start Iginla in the uh, AHL. Maybe have Sokolov scratch for a little bit to give Svensson some ice time. In the backup role. Yeah, I think so. And I think that will be it for our free agency here. We only have like 1.3 mil left. We don't can't, can't really sign, well, we could sign someone. We don't need to. We have 45 uh, players under contract. We're in great shape. Although I did sim up a few games. Was, was I looking for scouts or is my scouting team good? I think I was probably looking at a scout. I released two. I don't remember which ones I did. So let me take a quick scroll through here and then I'll take care of it off. You know what? I'll just take care of this off camera. All right. So here we are. Brady Kachuk, Quentin Worrell, and Mitch Marner on the first line. Alexis Lafreniere, Norris, and Galchenyuk on that second. Balsers, Brown, Anisimov, third line. Now we got Kulikov. Going to try this guy out. Uh, low elite sniper guy. I mean, he's not looking like he'll be anything special. So we can, you know, scratch him or trade him at some point. But I want to try him out. See what he, see if he got, you know, a hop or anything like that at age 23. And also have a uh, Drake Batherson and uh, Kwarvusari again, another kind of young guy, playmaker. I don't know this. I'm just looking at this guy, maybe a third liner, you know, Logan Brown. If I want to have a depth scoring third line, I don't think Logan Brown's the guy to get that done. So we're going to want to see what this uh, uh, Kwarvusari guy brings to the table. I mean, he's not bad defensively. His face-offs aren't great uh, unless he gets jumped there. We'll see what uh, Logan Browns are, but I think he was actually under 80, so that's lying. Anyway, those are going to be our lines right here. Defensively, Shabbat, McAvoy, Terrell Latang. These are just temporary, and then Odell, Pedestrom. So basically, very similar to what we had. And then Odell's going to have, uh, obviously, extra time, top PK unit. Try to keep him happy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then power play, Marner, Warrell, Kachuk with Shabbat and uh, Terrell. And then Lafreniere, Norris, Galchenyuk, Balser's on the point with McAvoy. So uh, no Odell here on the power play, but I think this will look really good. Uh, four man, kind of standard-ish. You know what? We'll try a little bit of something different here. Let's go with more of a pure passer and a pure shooter on the second power play. Yeah, I kind of like what I'm doing with uh, my others. Oh, I'll you guys have seen a bit. No, And then uh, here's a penalty kill. Norris, Logan Brown, McAvoy, Odell, Worrell, Anisimov. We're changing him uh, as was uh, suggested to a two-way forward. So we'll see how that works. Because he's not really producing as a playmaker. We're hoping for it. He's not really happening. Let's change him back to like some kind of defensive type guy. And then Pedersturm, Shabbat on the second unit. Same type of stuff through here. The reason I got Warrell in there is because those face-offs. All right, so here's the four on four. Warrell Marner, shooter passer. Uh, Norris Lafreniere, shooter passer. Galchenik and uh, Kachuk, sort of passer shooter. Kachuk doesn't take a whole amount of shots, but he has a good shot. So and yeah, it's the last pairing anyway. All right, and same thing for the three on three. Shabbat McAvoy Terrell, extra attacker Warrell Shabbat. Here's the shootout lineup, and of course. The goaltenders, Samsonov and Subban with an asterisk. <laughs> because we're having him in there temporarily. We'll see if Iginla gets that jump in. I'll just show you where the guys are playing on the uh, AHL. I got Kozlov back down here. Again, it's just that low awareness. I don't think he'll become much of anything, but I'm putting him back down here. He can at least be serviceable in there if we want to trade him or something. Uh, but here's where Tuomanin and Kapusta are going to start. Top two in the AHL. And also Iginla starting here with Svensson, the 20 year old. And uh, we'll see, we'll get Iginla fully scouted much quicker here than he would in that backup role, which is part of the reason I'm doing it. We could always call him up, no waivers necessary. And we could always do the same for the defensemen, make some trades, etc. see where we're at from there. So that's, these are uh, the, the Ottawa Senators. Same captain, Shabbat captain with Kachuk and Balsters as the alternates. So here we go, good to go. Let's. Well, we hope. Let's see what happens this season. I just want to kind of get everyone scouted. That's the main goal here. Try to get people scouted. See where we're at. 
maybe reassess from there if we want to make any further changes. Oh, uh, for our scratches, I didn't show this, but we got Hyman and Paquette up for the scratches. Lahois is the depth defenseman. So maybe I didn't need Hyman or Paquette, or at least maybe I could have used Hyman, not Paquette. Either way, but we got two. Better to have more. More is better than less. All right, let's get this first little past the preseason, get the first month done. We should have everyone scouted by then. Then I can maybe make some of those changes that we were thinking of. So I want to see how Samsonov works out in that starting goaltender role, or if he's even ready for starter. But the price he was asking for, I think he is. And look at us go. Preseason's preseason, yes, but we haven't scored less than three goals in regulation and four goals in a game. And it's continuing. All right, right there, we finally lose 4-2. to two. But it eh, could be promising. I don't know. You've seen good preseasons and then bad seasons. But I think with the team we have now, with everything starting to finally fall into place, it's been a while. It's, you know, it's taken some time, sure. Got my scout set up. Don't worry about that. Figured it out. There's two U.S. scouts. <laughs> and I had to pick up the old West scout we had because, yeah, couldn't find a better one. All right, so we lost the first game, then won the second. We scored a lot in both games, but we allowed a lot in that first game. All right, not bad start. 2-1-1. One, and one. Shootout loss. Come on now, shootout lineup. You're better than that. Apparently not. At least goaltending's doing good. You need to get that scoring back up there, though. All right. We're getting wins. They're not the craziest of wins, but we're getting Ws, and that's what's important. Put those points in the bank early. Let's see what the draft class has in store for us. Don't need him, clearly. Well, I mean, we're not going to have a pickup here anyway, so. Not a whole lot. Let's see about the low elites. That's what we're into. Uh, one, maybe. One getting close. Caesar Daze. Wasn't he in the draft last time? Yeah, I guess he didn't get picked. I feel like he was. I feel, yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in the draft last time. He didn't get selected, so we got a chance to get him again. Two-way guy, by the looks of it. We'll see. We'll see what the report on him is. Another win. All right. Letivari has been injured. But we got a good guy to put in for that. A center. I mean, I could put in LeBate, who's the center, but... Quick check to see if... Sturts can actually take face-offs here. Eh. Whatever. Let's just get... Let's just kind of stack the team. <laughs> I want to see them have a good year. They're starting off 5-1, and one, so... Stack the team as much as possible. Tough loss right there to St. Louis. Allowed some goals. Maybe an empty netter in there. And then another... Ugh. Inconsistent goal scoring. Don't like it. Oh, my goodness. Very inconsistent goal scoring. I mean, our goaltending's getting the job done, but... Man, 6-4-2 and two to start off. Not the start we wanted. That's for sure. That's for damn sure. 12 points for Warrell, so he's getting it done. But we seem to be struggling scoring overall, though. How's that second line? This second line should be doing wonders, but my goodness, is it doing nothing. What? That makes zero sense to me. Huh. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, maybe they're just having a slow start. I'm not going to break them up. I mean, how are you going to do that? They're incredible. Norris even got some more stat growth. Look at him. Should be taking a crap ton of shots. I mean, he is. I know his shot's not super accurate, but he's got he's to bury a few more for sure. He's taking a good amount of shots. He's just got to bury some. Face-offs at 79 compared to 75, yeah. Not a huge difference. What's his at? 84. Okay, better than I thought, actually. Yeah, Kovacari is going to really have to try to work to steal that role from him. Minus one, really? Uh, the second second one's doing great, but how are you guys minuses? Shabbat and McAvoy, that should not be a thing. Odell actually went up to an 86. Looking good, man. I hope Terrell gets more growth. I don't know that he will, though. 23. Pedestrum. He still lists his top six, but it's probably because our team is so good. He's an even. Samsonov's doing good. I mean, he's doing his part. And Subban doing well as the backup. Let's see. Is listed as a backup, but at 78, I'm actually a little bit worried it'll switch when I call him up. You know, that has happened. That it switches when I call him up. I am worried about that. Not gonna lie. Kozlov went up to an 82, but it, yeah, it's, yeah, his offense awareness is still meh. Oh my goodness, Griffin. 
Are you a shot taker? Mm, hard to say. Keeping you there for now, though. He'll still grow like a weed. Like it, <laughs> he will. Don't trust me. They doesn't matter if you're playing well below their role when you have so much talent. Like they just grow. Huh. Yeah, I wish that second line was doing better. Oh, speaking. Of, yeah, I got to check out the defense as well. Well, they are both listed as top sixes. Again, hesitant to bring him up. Latang is dropping though, 84. We could go Torello, Dell. And then we have two righties. Yeah, we'd have to wait for things to even out here, but. Or we could leave him there. Ah, I'm so torn. 79 is decent. And they're, you know, in the role, but they could also have amazing years with that stacked team. So I'm a little torn on that. Just keep that stacked. Could still trade Latang, but he's doing really well. I mean, they're at least locking it down. Yeah, we need that second line. I'm going to give it another month before I really do anything, especially with that goalie situation. I know it says backup, but he's still 78. It can still kind of go either way. Like if I call him up, it might he may switch back to, you know, the AHL type thing, which is it can. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it a few times. Usually it's when they're lower. So I don't know. You guys can let me know about that. All right. Anyway, we're going to get another another month done here regardless before I really make any move. I want to get your guys suggestions about trades. So, yeah, or, or you know, moves, roster moves, etc. Can can the second line get going? Because that's kind of what's holding us back right now is that second line. They need to get going. If they get going, we're fine. We're golden if these guys just start scoring. But if they don't start scoring, then we're in a bit of trouble because we need a good top six. Our, our, you know, our top line isn't exactly gangbusters. They could be kind of, but I mean, they're a little weirdly built. When Lafreniere gets up there, I'll have a lot more like hope and faith in that. All right, Letivori is fully healed. So get him back in. All right, if we can win a few games in a row here and put us in good shape. All right, tough loss to the Lightning, but we did win a few and we scored well, kept the puck out of the net well. Oilers are struggling. You got to take those wins. There we go. Same with VGK. Take the easy points. We lose to them, but we answer back with a big win against the Sharks. Still, though, we're not quite to that point where I don't have to worry about the Sim, where I just kind of breeze through it. There is a good defensive win right there. We did not have that in years past. So it's good when our... Offense doesn't exactly show up. It's oh Batherson. Yeah, he kind of needs to be on that PK. I'll check. I'll check how our PK is doing, and I might switch Batherson in for Warrell or something, or maybe even Norris. Whew! Winning now. That's what I like to see. Okay, he wasn't out, so just a minor injury for Shabbat. He played through it. He's a tough lad. He's the captain. Showing the rest how it's done. Here we go. We're starting to string together wins. Another close victory. That is the end of the month. That is what we wanted to see. End it on a strong note. End that on a strong note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No RFAs. Uh, oh, we lose that one in reg to Dallas, who are a decent team. But still, 17-7-2. That was a nice little win streak right there. Seven-game win streak. Not bad at all. All right, Mitchell Marner now leading the team in points. We are second in the division with a game in hand and only one point back, so we could be in front. Let's check everything out in full now, and then we can really decide what if we want to switch up some lines or anything like that. Uh, score! Wow, there we go. 3.27 goals, 4 goals against 2.00. That's what we've been missing. Power play is flying, 30.2%. Penalty kill, 81.8. One shorty. Could maybe switch that up. Very true. Good on home ice. Not as good on the road. 8-2 and two in the last 10, though. We're getting what we need from from our ratio. We just uh, need it to keep going in that direction. All right. So, Warrell. Actually, hilariously not scoring a whole lot. He's shooting a bunch, but not putting it in. 
There you go. Norris is getting back up there. 17 points. Let's stick with forwards. I see Terrell in there. Norris Lafreniere with only 16. Is he, He's actually listed as first liner, and he does have that franchise potential now, so I should probably move him up. Kachuk isn't doing bad, but what with what would happen with Lafreniere and Marner feeding Warrell? Like, I'm kind of thinking about that. And then Kachuk, Norris with Galchenyuk on a second line. Hybrid, shooter, passer. Maybe get a bit more production out of those guys. And just get more shutdown on that second pairing. Because right now, as it stands in our defense, we got um, Latang and uh, Terrell back there. Like, they're two more offensive-minded guys. So maybe putting, like, Kachuk on that second line would be decent. I'm not, I don't think I'll switch up the power play because they seem to be just flowing really well. First unit's doing great. Second unit's doing good. Like, I'll keep Lafreniere on the second unit to make sure Kachuk would remain happy with his second line ice time. Could always try that out. Really be able to see maybe Lafreniere break out. That's kind of the, the goal with that. Kulikov ain't doing too bad. He's really lifted, listed as depth at age, at uh, overall 22. 80, Jesus, 82. Age 23. Anisimov. He's not doing bad. Take some penalties. Are there some fights in there, or are you just hitting a lot? One fight. So minus five. Weirdly, doesn't this guy have high discipline? Yeah, he's got 87 discipline. Huh. Logan Brown with 10 points. Clevisari with eight. Fourth line are mostly minuses. Okay. Let's check out the defensive pairings. Terrell leading in points, 17. Yeah, it looks like McAvoy and Shabbat more splitting with, uh, the point scoring here. Getting their plus minuses up a bit. McAvoy does take some penalties, but no one else really in our defensive core takes a lot of penalties, so it's okay. Yeah, Terrell's doing excellent. Latang not actually getting, but damn, dude, that pairing. Terrell and Latang, just look at the points they're able to get. Everyone's a plus. And this is what we're after. Holy crap. Samsonov's doing great. Can't really ask for much more out of that guy. Look at what, look at, look at what he's doing. I mean, not even might even get more stat growth on top of this if he continues like this. Malcolm Subban doing excellent in the backup role. And with Ginla being 23, yeah, see that? Minor starting goalie. That's part of the reason. There we are. With him already being at that 23, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly more looking towards Svensson on the horizon at 74, at 20, rather than Ginla. So, I'm glad we have Samsonov right now. I am, really. I'm glad we didn't have a step back. I'm, I'm really glad we made the moves that we did. So, good call. You, you, I know you mentioned uh, Shostorkin, but decided on Samsonov because, well, his stats kind of spoke for themselves and they continue to speak right here. So we're in good shape. We do have one rookie, Kovacari. Probably won't be in the running for the Calder. Well, likely won't be. He's on the fourth line. You never know. Okay, so the PK is decent, but could I make it better? Do we want to call up those young defensemen, or should we keep rolling with kind of what's working right now and what seems to be doing well? I do. I, I know that they're listed. You see, Kapusta's still growing. And uh, that might be a lot of morale. But still. They're still liking where they're playing, and they're succeeding. They're both pluses. They got some points each. Like, Look at that defensive core. It's actually filthy. Havlid is a guy I'm just going to use as a ringer, most likely. He's not really built well enough for an NHL team. Gov, on the other hand, I'd be okay with this guy capping out at top six. That's why I'm just going to keep him in here. He got him to 80 overall. You know, I'll likely just keep him around here. He maybe do that top six. We'll see. How's his defense? They're both really even. Like, I'd love him to grow and be really good. We have two to choose from. But is putting up on the NHL the best way to go about that? It's questionable. I you I've seen a lot of good low elites, especially grow amazingly in the AHL. I mean, you think back to our our last franchise. We had that guy. I forget who it was, but he grew from like he was stuck. He has like an 83 in the AHL. Everyone's telling me to bring him up. I just didn't have room for him. And then the next year he jumped to an 87. Like it's it's possible. So. 
part of the reason I'm being hesitant on all that. Like they could still grow like weeds and we still, we have a pretty relatively stacked team at the same time. Huh. Yeah, Norris, that's that stat growth you got. He's got to have to get have another good year to keep that about him. Tang. Got stat growth keeping him up. He will naturally decline a bit more, but he at least has got that helping him out. Samson doesn't have too much. I think if he has a great year, he could go really, really well up there. But yeah, other than that, not a whole hell of a lot. Stat growth for Lafreniere, but not a whole lot. So, yeah, that's pretty much natural. That you're seeing out of them. All right, let's check in the system here. Good growth from this Warren Bertram guy. Looking solid in his offense, solid in his defense. Yeah, just looking good. Grant, another defenseman lefty, 19. He needs to have a really, really big growth here if he wants to get back on track. Yeah, he's looking good, though, at least defensively. Donsk, 70, doesn't matter. Of course, he's going to grow a lot. Just what happens. Papin, oh, yeah, this guy's not looking promising. He's going to, again, has to grow a shit ton this year to get back on track. It's not looking promising, but, man, you know, maybe a uh, maybe a role player of the future. Paton, he's on really good pace. Yeah, pretty well built. And Arnold, the franchise goalie, is also growing a bit already, which is good. You like to see that out of goaltenders. Oftentimes, they don't seem to grow too well. Yeah, and I didn't. I chose not to sign this guy because, goddamn, I just have really not a whole lot of room. But he is ready for that third line perfectly. How's his defense look, though? Whew, not bad. Could he center that third line is a big question. He has 79 face-offs. I mean, maybe. Yeah. Hmm. Got a lot to think about here. We could sign him, but we'd have to trade likely Logan Brown. Logan Brown right now is doing okay on the PK. Speaking of that, so let's take a look at maybe can we improve that PK. The way I'm thinking about doing it is... Uh, Either putting him on for Norris or Warrell. Which is a very tough call. He's got a shorthanded point. Could try him in there for Norris. Logan Brown does... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Batherson. And he does have slightly better face-offs than Logan Brown. So we could do something like that, get Batherson extra ice time as well as maybe improve the power, uh, the penalty kill. I really like Quinton on there just for the faceoffs and his defensive stats are out of this world. Yeah, so that's what I'm thinking for that. And you guys let me know. Should we sign McElhaney, which would likely mean we would trade Logan Brown. Or someone else, like, give way to Kulikov, hold on to Anisimov, move him down to the fourth line, and play McElhaney on that third. Or what? Tough call, as well as the defensive situation. Trade Latang, make way for the new guys to, to come in. Or kind of let things go as they are. So I'm going to need you guys' help with that. Let me know what we should do with all those things. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to leave that like. And I'll see you in the next one. If watching my videos just isn't enough sin for you, be sure to go over there on Twitter and shoot me a follow. And you could even join our Discord server as well to talk with some of the other sinners out there. The links to both are in the description.